Hello everyone, welcome to yet another Star Wars Old Republic video and we are looking at more data mined information. Now recently there has been a surge of data mined information and one of the things that was put up here was um, abilities. So new abilities that were added to the public test server and there were like 800 something abilities that were added and so what I, went did, uh, what I did was I went ahead and went through all of them and I picked out the abilities that I thought were new. So uh, these are obviously going to be abilities. I haven't organized them through uh, classes, so it's not like I'm going to go through each class. I'm just kind of picked out the abilities as they came in alphabetical order, and I'm just going to be going through them in this video and looking at some of the really cool stuff because there is some pretty neat stuff coming. And keep in mind, uh, some of these abilities might change when they actually get introduced in the game. Some of them might not be introduced at all. You know, it's all subject to change or whatever. These are just being tested on the public test server. However, there's two main errors I want to point out quickly, uh, just so you guys are aware of them. The first one being, because I went through these pretty quickly, I probably missed some. And so I'll leave a link in the description to the website, the Older Public Community, where all these abilities are listed. And you can go ahead and check that out for yourself. I encourage you to do so, because as I mentioned, there's probably a few of these things that I missed. And so you'd, you'd be better if you just went through it slowly and looked at it yourself, if you're curious about it. And the second main thing is, uh, because I haven't really played the Republic classes especially, I don't really know the Republic abilities and the past passives in depth because the names of those abilities and passives are different when compared to the imperial classes and just in general I'm not like adept with every single class I don't know the names of every passive and stuff and so what might end up happening for a few of these is I might say this is a new passive or something or a new ability and in reality it kind of already exists in the game and so unfortunately that might happen because I did go through these pretty quickly there's like 800 abilities to go through and so I had to be pretty rough with my estimates in terms of what I thought was new and being added. But that's only going to happen in maybe one or two cases maximum, and so it's not going to be the majority of this stuff. Anyway, so let's get right into the first one, and this one is called Armor Melt. So this is an instant cast ability. It fires a high impact shot that deals a certain amount of weapon damage, reduces the target's armor by 20% for 45 seconds. It also inflicts trauma for 9 seconds, which reduces all healing the target receives by 20%. It fires both blasters if dual wielding. I'm not sure if this one already exists. This is maybe one of those cases where it might be the name of a Republic ability or something. Uh, I, I feel like, you know, the whole reducing the t t um, the healing that the target receives by 20%, I think that already exists. It's more of the reducing the target's armor by 20% that I don't think exists. Uh, those are kind of two debuffs that you're putting on your enemy, and so that I think that's a new ability. But anyways, uh, we'll start off with that one, and then we'll go into... Oh, wow, it seems like the computer's freezing. Okay. We'll click out of that. All right, so the second one that we're going to go into is called Below the Belt. Now, this one blasts the target for two energy damage and stuns it for four seconds. Okay, so basically, um, I think this is one of those cases where right now, when you're a smuggler or an Imperial agent or whatever, you have a stun. And that, and that stun is, you know, the basic four second stun, but you have to do it in close range. I believe you have to be in a range of four meters. And what's going to end up happening to a lot of these classes is they're going to get now range stuns. So if you're a ranged class, for example, you might be a mercenary or a, um, or a sniper or something, you're going to get a stun that you can use, as you guys can see, a 10 meter range. Now keep in mind, I don't know which class this is for. It's probably for the mercenary, honestly, uh, because the mercenary is one of the more ranged classes. Things like Imperial Agents, uh, or sorry, thing, uh, classes like Operatives or Power Techs are all supposed to be melee classes. And so I believe this is going to the mercenary. And as you guys can see, it can be used from a range of 10 meters. So you can stun your target at range. The next one is Blade Barrage. Blade Barrage. So obviously that's supposed to replace Blade Dance, and then you also have Ravage. And these are both instant casts. So I've already mentioned this in a previous video where it's talking about the class changes, that um, these aren't new abilities, but they are now instant. And that's probably going to change uh, the animations and stuff. However, uh, it's going to probably do a ton of really, really good damage. I mean, Ravage itself can do anything from like 15k to 18k damage around that area. And so doing that instantly is going to be pretty crazy. Alright, this is an interesting one, Breath of Ice Axe. The reason I threw that in there is because that's probably one of those special abilities that you get during a class or something, or during a chapter or something. So you might be playing a chapter and, uh, you know, you make the right choices and stuff and you get a cool ability like the Breath of Isaac, which seems to do it, we're probably going to do a ton of damage considering Isaac is a pretty um, powerful character in Zakul mythology. And so that's a pretty cool ability, just thought I'd throw that in there. Okay, going back into the class changes, Censoring Slice. Now, this one hurls the main hand lightsaber at a target, deals a certain amount of weapon damage, and slows its movement speed by 50% for 3 seconds. It's only usable on targets at or below 30% max health, and it replaces Dispatch. 
and the version of that there's two versions of that here this it's called hue and um hue uh, f i believe one of these is probably going to be for the juggernaut and one of them is going to be for the guardian and um, and so basically what it is is it's just a, a, an ability a new ability for these classes that will replace vicious throw or uh, dispatch for the guardians and the only difference is it's probably going to do a, a little bit more damage but it reduces the movement speed by 30 percent uh, sorry by 50 percent and so that's kind of the main part about it what differentiates it from the base ability the reason you're going to be wanting to use this rather than vicious throw is because you're going to be, obviously you're a melee class so you want your target to be moving a lot slower now unfortunately there's no information for this one but it's charged shot and what's interesting is um, you know you already have something called charged burst and that is for the gunslinger and so I believe charged shot might be an ability that will end up replacing that so it's going to be an ability that basically says you know you get it once you reach a certain level and then it replaces your charged burst and it probably does more damage might even add a debuff on your target or something but unfortunately there is no information about that same thing with this electrifying barrage i believe this is going to be a new ability that maybe the sorcerers get so i think sorcerers and jedi sages are going to get some version of this ability but once again there's just no information same thing with electro smash i have absolutely no idea what this is going to be for just thought i'd throw these in there because they all seem to be very new abilities and given that there are classes like um jedi shadows and sith assassins and it seems to be that they're going to be losing abilities for example Jedi Shadows and Sith Assassins are losing phase walk, uh, at least that's what the data mine information says. And so if they're losing abilities, then they need to be also gaining abilities. So if they lose an ability, they're going to gain a new one. And so some of these abilities might actually be going to them. Alright, Enfeebling Lash. So this one says, Lash the target with your lightsaber, dealing a certain amount of weapon damage and immobilizing it for 3 seconds. When the immobilization effect ends, the target is slowed by 50% for 6 seconds and this replaces Saber Strike. So this hasn't really ever been introduced in the game before, where you get a new ability that replaces your base ability. Saber Strike is supposed to be one of those complete filler things that you can always use whenever you need to. And it seems as though that uh, either Guardians or Marauders are going to be getting this ability that will replace their saber strike now there's also a, a theme here going where as you saw that with hue and now you're seeing that here where you're getting these abilities that replace your base abilities but they also have this debuff that reduces movement speed so it's really helping those melee classes able uh, it really helps them kind of burn down their targets and keep their targets in their range because especially when i'm playing a melee class i have a really hard time especially as a juggernaut and stuff trying to keep up with my target especially when you have um, operators that can just barrel roll away you have mercenaries that can use their hydraulic override uh, sorks that can just phase walk away or four speed away and so it's really hard to keep you know keep on them when you're a melee class so these all these types of abilities are really going to help because they allow you to put those debuffs on your target making them move very very slowly now this one's exhaustive shot so it drains the target dealing a certain amount of weapon damage over a 10 second duration and causes the target to become sundered sundered targets have their armor re reduced by 20 percent for 45 seconds so I'm, I don't think this ability exists in the game right now. Uh, you know, I, there's no such thing that drains a target for a certain amount of weapon damage over 10 seconds. Maybe it's a damage over time. You see, when I first saw this, uh, I thought it was a channeled ability, but now I'm seeing here it's actually an instant ability. So it seems to be more of a dot over time. Uh, it seems to be more of a dot. Anyway, so we'll move on. Extreme Prejudice. So this one just seems to be uh, unload, or what, what is it called for um, the commandos? It's called Full Auto. Uh, so it seems to be just another name for it, honestly. Uh, I just thought I'd th throw that in there because um, it seems as though some of these abilities are getting renamed. We saw that when Patch 3.0 came out that a lot of abilities got renamed. Uh, and so it seems as though we might be getting some renames as well for Patch 5.0. Now this one's an interesting one. This is called Fire Armor Piercing Rocket. It has a 1.1 second activation time. And it fires a single armor piercing rocket at your target, deals a certain amount of weapon damage, and causes the target to take 25% increased damage for the next 30 seconds. That's very insane. And I'm not sure who's getting this ability. I would assume, uh, given that it's a rocket that can be channeled, probably going to mercenaries. And so that's, you know, if that ability actually gets introduced in the game, that's going to be a crazy ability for mercenaries, given that they can now increase the, uh, the damage their target takes by 25%. That's pretty insane. 
All right, flak shell. Now this one fires a high velocity shell, instantly exploding on contact with the target, dealing a certain amount of kinetic damage to eight enemies in an eight meter area. So this is a um, AOE ability, and I believe this is going to power techs. I think that's what I remember when I was going through the uh, class changes in patch 5.0, that data mine information came out a little bit earlier. But uh, bottom line is this is another AOE ability and it's very similar to something like the um, explosive dart that mercenaries have. But the difference between the explosive dart and this is this one is going to be an instant cast. And so I would assume, that, and it says it instantly explodes on contact. So it's not one of those things where you throw it and then it explodes later. It's going to instantly explode. And, um, and I believe it's probably going to do a lot more damage. I think it's going to be a hard hitting AOE ability. Now these are two relics. Um, one thing is, I w I'm not sure whether this is something like um, you might get it during a chapter, like it may just be a relic that you're able to use in a chapter, because we've seen similar gameplay mechanics like that with a Knights of the Fallen Empire Chapter 16 for example, where you got to either choose whether you wanted turrets or you wanted the cool weapons, and then you could use those during the, during the chapter to help you fight the bosses and stuff. I'm not sure if this is one of those things, or maybe it's an actual relic, or maybe it's ability, I don't know. But it basically says the force will be with you for 12 seconds. All abilities have no resource cost or cooldown and your movement speed is increased by 100%. For 12 seconds, that's pretty insane. And so I don't think it's going to be an, an ability. I really doubt it. And I also don't think it's going to be something that's usable in PvP areas or usable in PvE instances. I really think it's going to be restricted to just a chapter. So it might be something that you're able to use there because it seems very OP if you're able to use it in PvP or PvE. Freezing Beam, another one of those abilities that really there's just no information about it, but it does seem to be a new ability. Hardened Deflection, this one's very interesting. Activates a fleeting but powerful emergency deflection shield, reduces damage taken by 100% for 3 seconds. I do believe this one's going to Mercenary uh, only because of the um, little ability photo you see at the top left there. You know, that's like the energy shield and stuff, and I think it's something... Uh, it's supposed to be resemblant of evasion. Evasion is given to the operatives and the um, smugglers. They have that ability for three seconds to become invincible. You assassins have that as well. Um, and marauders have that as well. So they all have abilities that they can pop, which basically makes them in invincible for a few seconds. And so uh, get this ability is obviously not going to go to them since they already have an ability that does that. And so I would assume it's going to go to uh, the mercenaries, probably, probably trying to increase the survivability of mercenaries. And there are a few other passives and stuff that actually are trying to increase the survivability of mercenaries. And so that's going to be pretty cool. Really going to help mercenaries, especially in, um, or commandos, especially in arenas. So if that ability does go to them, it's going to be very helpful. All right, Lance. Spears the target with both lightsabers, dealing a certain amount of weapon damage and hindering the target for 1.5 seconds, preventing the use of high mobility actions and escapes requires two lightsabers. So obviously this is going for the sentinels and marauders. And, um, and the difference, or the big kind of point of this is it hinders a target for 1.5 seconds. So obviously very useful in ranked arenas and arenas in general, where you want to prevent that sorcerer from using their bubble, or you want to prevent the operative from exfiltrating away. Um, this is the ability to do that. And it's probably going to do a ton of damage too. So Ordinance Onslaught. Unloads all of your ordnance in rapid succession, casting jets of fire, rail shots, and other munitions that deal the certain amount of kinetic damage and a certain amount of elemental damage over the duration to up to eight enemies within five meters over the duration. Standard and weak enemies are knocked down by the blast, generates 30 heat over the duration, the ability is channeled over three seconds, and usable while mobile. So when I first saw this, I immediately thought that's very close to death from above. And I would assume, once again, given the whole jets of fire rail shots and stuff, it's probably going to go to either power techs or mercenaries. And then obviously the Republic side, commandos or vanguards, just given the terminology of it. And, um, and it, as you guys can see, is a really, really OP ability. And I'm really excited about this one, honestly. I mean, it seems like it's going to deal a ton of damage. It's a very great AoE ability, and it's usable while mobile. So... That, that's definitely what differentiates this one from Death from Above or something similar to that because you're able to cast this AoE ability that seems to be doing a ton of kinetic damage and then elemental damage is much harder for people to just kind of um, brush off. 
for example, if, if a tank has a really good amount of um, damage mitigation, well, elemental damage is going to be doing a lot more damage to them or something like that. And so, this seems like a very cool ability. Now, maim, this is what I was kind of talking about earlier. It hurls a vibro knife at the target, dealing a certain amount of energy damage and stunning it for 4 seconds and usable at 10 meter range. So this is going to snipers and gunslingers, I know this for sure. And uh, this is just, as I was mentioning, they're trying to give these range classes the ability to stun people from range. Okay, Reaper's Rush. So this one is going, this one is a passive ability that is going to Assassins and Jedi Shadows. And basically, Phantom Stride will grant Reaper's Rush, allowing your next Assassin to be used on any target, regardless of remaining health. Reaper's Rush lasts for 10 seconds. Additionally, if the target of your Phantom Stride is killed, within 6 seconds of using Phantom Stride, Phantom Stride cooldown is reset. So what I can garner from this one is that it's supposed to be this finisher execute ability. So for example, if you're an assassin, you're in PvP and you see this enemy that's at very low health, then you can just fandom stride over to them. It allows your assassinate to be used, it procs that one, so you can use your assassinate, finish him off really quickly, and if you're able to finish him off within six seconds then your phantom stride gets reset, then you can go looking for another target that might be at low health and keep doing that until you finish off everyone in your area. And so I think that's generally how it's supposed to be used. It's supposed to be this uh, ability for assassins to basically assassinate people. You know, go ahead and finish off these low level targets. And then obviously Jedi Shadows are going to have uh, similar abilities, but um, this is specifically tar uh, targeted towards the Imperial side. Okay, Reaping Strike. So this is an instant ability, seem uh, once again going to Assassins and Jedi Shadows. It says, lash the target with an acrobatic strike, dealing a certain amount of weapon damage, only usable from stealth or within 15 meters of per or within 15 seconds of performing a critical strike, requires a double-bladed saber or electro staff. So it's just a, another ability, and as I was saying before, especially with Assassins and Shadows, the fact that they're losing phase walk and stuff like that, you know, if they're losing abilities, they're going to have to gain abilities, and so th these are some of the abilities that they're going to be getting. Hopefully they can compensate, you know, losing phase walk and stuff like that is a very huge thing, and so hopefully these abilities that they're going to actually end up getting is going to compensate for that, and they're, they're going to still be pretty strong. This one is for the Juggernauts and Guardians. Intercede grants Reckoning, which increases the damage dealt by your next melee ability by 20%. This effect lasts for 10 seconds. The reason I really like this one is because um, things like Intercede, I feel, aren't used very often unless um, a, a Guardian or a Juggernaut is a tank. Because if they're a tank, obviously they're trying to keep their, uh, their friendly players alive. But especially when noobs like me are playing, we don't use intercede that often and so this is really going to help us use intercede more often because now we actually get a damage buff to it so we know that if we intercede to a friendly player we're going to be doing more damage we're going to be doing increased damage by 20 percent so that's probably going to get us using intercede a lot more often finally reel and rattle so grapple deals a certain amount of tech damage to pull targets and grants silence is golden, causing your next rocket punch or flaming fist against the pull target to deal 20% additional kinetic damage and stun the target for 1.5 seconds. This effect lasts for 6 seconds. So this is a really cool passive ability, obviously going for those, uh, it's going to those power techs and vanguards. And the reason this is absolutely awesome is because right now grapple doesn't deal damage. So for example, if uh, we want to get to a person normally, or at least in my opinion, I use um, Jet Charge because Jet Charge will actually do damage to them. However, this way Grapple will still be doing damage and we're going to be able to use that Grapple and um, Flaming Fist or Rocket Punch combo where basically you just pull the target to you and then immediately use your Rocket Punch or Flaming Fist. Almost everybody does that, at least what I've seen, and I definitely do that all the time. And so this is going to be a very nice buff to that because it's going to basically make that combo a lot stronger considering your Flaming Fist and your Rocket Punch is going to be doing 20% more damage. So that's the first group of abilities. Let's go on to the second one. Okay, going on into the second one. We have Wicked Vivacity. So this is a new passive and it says unnatural preservation increases your damage reduction by 15% for 6 seconds, additionally reduces the cooldown of a natural preservation by 5 seconds. So this is going to be one of those um, sk skill tree uh, points that you can use because anything that has to do with cooldown reduction usually is on the skill tree. And this is basically going to allow you to have some damage reduction. Uh, right now, 
you have a, the choice of getting a of using one of your points to get a passive where your cloud mind which is supposed to be your threat reducer actually gives you damage reduction as well so I'm not sure if we're going to be able to stack that so maybe if we choose that um, specific skill and also we use we choose wicked vivacity then we're going to be having a 25 percent reduction and then this 15 percent reduction which we, which if we stack will be a pretty big damage reduction or maybe and at least what i think is going to happen is this wicked vivacity is going to replace that so instead of using your cloud mind to get a damage reduction they're basically going to say use your unnatural preservation anyway and that is much much more effective because as a sorcerer, you're probably using unnatural preservation a lot more in, in instances like PvP rather than Cloud Mind. Okay, Unyielding Justice. This one is going to the Guardians and Juggernauts, and it says increases the range of Blade Storm to 30 meters, but Blade Storm, or for the Juggernauts, is Force Scream, deals reduced damage beyond 10 meters. Additionally, Br Blade Storm deals 20% more damage and grants Unyielding Justice, allowing your next Blade Storm. To deal full damage regardless of the distance from the target. So, what this means is your force scream. It basically is allowing you to use it at a certain um, distance. So, let's say you're a juggernaut. You're trying to finish this person off, but they run away. Well, if you're not close enough, you don't have any uh, closer abilities. You know, your force charge is inactive or something. Then you can go ahead and use your blade storm at a big distance and try to finish them off that way but it will be doing reduced damage so threat sensors increases stealth detection level by three melee and range defenses by three percent and reduces the cooldown of stealth scan by five seconds Additionally, when you activate Cure on yourself, all periodic damage is, take, is reduced by 30% for 12 seconds. This one is probably going for the Mercenaries and Commandos. And as I had mentioned earlier, I was saying that there are some abilities and passives that are going to try to increase the survivability of Mercenaries and Commandos. And this is just another example of that. Not only is it letting you have greater stealth detection, but using it, uh, but melee and rage defenses are increased by 3%. And then if you activate Cure on yourself, all periodic damage taken is reduced by 30%, which is pretty big. So that's definitely going to help increase the survivability. Tempest Rocket Launcher. Now this ability fires an unstable prototype projectile that explodes on contact to unleash torrents of lightning in all directions. Enemies caught in the blaze are electrocuted and stunned for 3 seconds while continuing to sustain heavy damage. Additionally, the Im initial impact deals massive concussive damage, knocking enemies backwards and down to the floor. Given that this is a rocket launcher, once again, I feel as though it's going to be going to mercenaries and power techs. But I could be wrong, I mean, they seem like these are way too many abilities going to mercenaries and power techs and all the other classes are being neglected. But, uh, but it does seem that way. Anything to do with rockets really tends to go to power techs and mercenaries. And this, once again, a very cool ability. I think it's going to be pretty awesome if it actually gets introduced into the game. Another AoE thing that uh, not only stuns, but it says while continuing to sustain heavy damage. So I'm not sure what that means. Does the ability do damage or does that, increase, does that place a debuff on your target that makes them take more damage? I'm not sure, but it is. it seems to be one of those abilities that will do AoE damage and also stun, uh, uh, basically be an AoE stun as well. Now, Telekinetic Defense. This is a uh, passive ability for, sorcerer, for sorcerers and sages. And so your force armor, which is the static barrier for sorcerers, reverberates with force energy, blasting attackers for a certain amount of energy damage when it absorbs direct damage to you. This effect does not affect force armors placed on allies and it cannot occur more than once each second. So basically all this means is if you're a sage and a sork and you have your, uh, your barrier on you as, you, as that barrier absorbs damage, you're also kind of reflecting some of that damage back to the attacker. So it's going to be increasing your damage output by a little bit, which is very nice considering sorcerers and assassins are set to have very, very big nerfs to their damage. I hope that's not the case, but what the data mine information shows is that they're getting nerfed from anywhere from 5 to 15% on every single ability. So every single ability these sorcerers do, they're getting nerfed. And so the fact that they're getting at least some passes that are going to help increase their damage output is, is good. Now stay down. This is one of those passes that seems to be going to gunslingers and, and um, snipers. 
and it seems to be one of those things that are supposed to help those snipers really finish off a target. So it says dealing damage with aimed shot to a target with less than 30% health grants stay down, increasing the damage of your next quick draw by 20%. So basically it's supposed to be used as a combo, you do your aimed shot, you get the target to really low health and you do your quick draw which is going to be doing 20% more damage to really finish off that target. So one of those executor type combos. So Chaos is a passive and it says when Sabotage damages a target, So Chaos deals a certain amount of additional energy damage per stack of blazing speed on the target. Additionally, Sabotage harms up to 7 other enemy targets within 5 meters if the primary target is affected by your blazing speed. Uh, I would like to tell you more about this, but I have absolutely no clue what any of this is. Blazing speed, uh, uh, I just uh, Sabotage, I don't know what those are. Um, I'm... I, I kind of feel as though they have something to do with a Republic class because the fact that I've never heard of them might mean that there are abilities that are related to public classes. I'm sorry, I'm not going to waste any more time on this. I just have absolutely no clue what that is. It might also be, given that it's sabotage, it might actually be something to do with gunslingers, uh, the engineering specs specifically, but I'm sorry, I'm not sure at all. All right, Shatter Slug. Fires a high impact slug from your wrist launcher, instantly exploding on contact with the target, dealing a certain amount of kinetic damage to 8 enemies in an 8 meter area. So this is uh, basically the Republic version of what we had talked about earlier, which was one of those instant throws where you throw something at, um, at a bunch of targets and it's an AoE damage. We already talked about the Imperial version of it, this is just a Republic version of it. Searing Wave torches everything in a 10 meter cone with a flamethrower, dealing a certain amount of elemental damage to up to 8 targets. Uh, this just seems to be a rename of the flamethrower. So I think the reason I put that out there was because I just wanted to say some of these abilities are getting renamed, but I think I already mentioned that earlier. Searing Stab, this one seems to be a new one. It says, performs a series of saber attacks that deals a certain amount of weapon damage over 3 seconds. Standard and weak enemies are additionally stunned for the duration of the effect. Strikes with both weapons if dual wielding. I'm not sure why this has been added. Uh, this is basically just seems to be Ravage or Blade Dance um, w under a different name because it has the exact same effect. A series of saber attacks deals a certain amount of weapon damage. It's channeled over three seconds and standard of weak enemies are stunned. So um, yeah, I'm not sure if it, I'm not sure um, why that's been added. Maybe it was just to test something, but I doubt that's going to be entering the game considering Ravage and Blade Dance are uh, basically changing. They're not getting removed or anything, they're just changing to an being becoming an instant ability where they're not channeled. So I'm not sure what the purpose of this is or what this even is. Maybe uh, they're getting Ravage and Blade Dance, that's going to become an instant ability with reduced damage and they're also getting Searing Stab, which is going to be the replacement for Ravage and Blade Dance. I don't know. Maybe that's the case. Searing Skewer. The warrior thrusts his saber into the target's abdomen, inflicting moderate damage on the initial strike followed by high internal damage spread over 15 seconds. So this one seems to be uh, just, what what's that ability called? Plasma Shatter or something? Oh man, sh Shatter I think it is. It's the, it's, the, it's the dot that Vengeance Juggernauts get where they um, do... Uh, where they do an ability where they do some initial damage and then it has a damage over time afterward. So there just seems to be a rename with a different ability, where the warrior thrusts his saber into the target's abdomen instead of the current uh, animation that it has. I'm not sure if it's a new ability that's getting added on or if it's going to replace uh, Shatter, but I, I'm pretty sure it's going to replace Shatter. Uh, Sapping Strike Lashes a target with your lightsaber, dealing a certain amount of weapon damage and immobilizing it for 3 seconds. When the immobilization effect ends, the target is slowed by 50% for 6 seconds. Replace the saber strike. Yeah, we already talked about this one. This is just a Republic version of it. Alright, Resonating Force Relics. So these are those. Re these are some more of those relics we were talking about. And, um, and some of these are really cool, as I was mentioning. They, see, they all seem to be pretty OP. This one says it imbues you with the celerity of the force, making all abilities have no resource cost or cooldown. Oh, we already talked about this one. I'm not sure why it repeated. What is this one? Oh, this is the same thing, but this one is energy. Ah, this one's energy and that one's force, but no need to go through them. We already talked about them before. And the final one, the final one is Resonant Pulse. Now this one is a passive. It says targets hit by force in balance have a 50% chance to emit a Resonant Pulse, damaging targets within 5 meters of the original target for a certain amount of internal damage. Uh, keep in mind, balance, force in balance is just a death field for the sorcerers. 
And uh, once again, as I mentioned, it's nice to see them getting these damage buffs because their damage on the whole is getting nerfed. And so the fact that we're getting some passes that will allow us to still dish out a decent amount of damage is good. And so it's nice to see that Bioware is compensating for these nerfs that these classes are getting. But those are my rundown of the new abilities that are coming in patch 5.0. Once again, I probably missed a few because I was going through like 800 of them. That's, it's really easy to miss a few. And the second thing is I'm sorry if I, if I talked about abilities which I thought were new and then they actually already exist in the game. Uh, it, you know, I tried to go online and like search up um, different abilities that I was going to go through to see if they already exist. But that was way too tedious. I had to stop. It was taking up way too much time. But at the end of the day, I do really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope you guys found it informative. All this new data mining stuff is very exciting and it's very exciting to see some changes that are coming with the classes because that's going to change the whole PvP dynamic especially, which is what I'm concerned with and obviously it's going to affect the PvEers as well. And it's going to be nice to see which classes end up getting buffed and becoming the new strong OP classes and which ones end up becoming the weaker ones. But at the end of the day, as I mentioned, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.